we're on one side of town and then we're on the other side of town and we're bringing in you brothers and so our ministry just never stop amen is when i got home last night brother joshua i don't know some of y'all know but brother joshua that left the home uh he was wanting to come back to the home and, and we had some words some encouraging words and and um you know that's this is what we're i'm just bringing a short message of encouraging words but god did put something on my heart tonight and how god disciplines his sons amen and uh this is why we're here tonight is because we have decided to walk in discipline. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible, I'm going to pray. Father God, in the mighty name amen. of Jesus. How's everybody tonight? Amen. Everybody good? Amen. Your church is looking full. Amen. Everybody good out there? Amen. Everybody had the rest? Yeah. Amen. Some working and they're still working. Amen. The Bible tells us that all scripture is inspired by God. Amen. 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 All scripture and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Amen. Amen. So no matter where you are in the word of God, it's there for a reason. Yep. It's there to tell you, you know what, you're messing up. It's there for correction. It's there for training. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And it's there to lead you to righteousness. It's there to lead you from uh, your unrighteousness. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. The Bible warns us that we, what we say and how we say it is important to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't you know that communication is key to all that we do and all that we say? Yes. Are y'all with me this, this evening? Yes. The Bible tells that an unreliable messenger stumbles into trouble. But a reliable messenger brings healing. Amen. Amen. I've heard a lot of this going on in the home. You know, he said, are you looking at me? I'm looking at you funny. Me looking at you. Yeah. Would you be, should be looking at yourself. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, yeah, I don't hear no love in the house tonight. Amen. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, that you must be quick. To hear. Come on, somebody. To listen. Slow what? Speak. To speak and what? Yes. Slow to anger. Yes. Proverbs tells us that the tongue can bring death or life. Amen. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Sometimes we, we, we begin to talk too much, but we should be busy. Listen. Oh, you're with me tonight, Brother Robert. Amen. Come on, somebody. We got to be quick to say, you know what? Let me listen for a while mm -hmm. because maybe there's something in front of me that ain't right. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm too quick to speak it. Too quick to get angry. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the word in Matthew in 8, 15 and through 16, he tells us if another believer sins against you, he says, go privately and point out the offense. Mm -hmm. Listen to this now. Brother Henry, everybody out there in the home. Mm -hmm. What did he just say? Go to him privately and talk to him. He didn't say go over there. And he said, let, 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 me, let me speak to his brother. But let me do it in privately about the offense. Because if we can't work it out among ourselves. Come on, somebody. How can we get through that little storm? You see, see, the enemy just uses a little bit. Hey, you hid my shoes. Come on, somebody. Uh, did you pick up my telephone? Oh, you ate my dinner. Oh, come on, somebody. He'll use the little small things. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't find something. But you says go. Oh my God. Help me Holy Ghost. If another believer sins. And you know that we sin by not even listening to a brother. By, by already, already judging him. Already coming. In. You, he didn't even say to you all. This brother don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Oh I already know what he's going to say. Yeah. Wait a minute. You ain't trying to hear him. He's trying to correct you, 
Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody now. Look what it says. If that other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Amen. Amen. He's your friend again. Now you, you want to win and talk to him in private and you worked it out. Now he's done come back. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. But if he's hard-headed, my God, I'm talking to somebody. If he don't want to listen, it says, but if you are unsuccessful, what is this saying? You can't reach him. I'm trying to talk to him. I'm trying to tell him what's right, but it's, you, you're being unsuccessful. Amen. Look what it says. He says, but if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again. Amen. Amen. He says, take how many? One. Or what? Two. Or two. Why? So that everything that you may say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Yes. So now you got witnesses. You're trying to you're trying to help this brother out. He ain't trying to reason. But now you got a witness. Amen. Because the enemy loves to say, no, no, I didn't say that. No, 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 he heard me wrong. Oh, he lying. I didn't say that. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and all. Oh, my God, help me, Holy Ghost. We would be perfect and could also control ourselves in any and every way. James talks about it, amen, in, in chapter 3, 2. He says that indeed we make many mistakes. Amen. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Amen. Don't you know it starts right here? Yeah. All troubles start right here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But good communication is a skill that must be taught. Amen. Amen. Communication, brothers and sisters, it has to be taught. Yes. Some of us don't have it. Some of us are not good communicators. Yeah. Like, man, no, I can't go speak to this brother. Oh, you intimidated. But the Bible tells me he didn't give us a, come on, a spirit of timid. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But a power and a sound mind. Yes. Amen. We can do all things through Christ. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Indeed, we all make mistakes, but if we know how to control this first. We got the battle won. Amen. Good communication is a skill that must be taught. Being able to communicate well is vital for all relationships. You know that, brothers and sisters? Friends, for our marriage, for our workers, for everywhere we're around. Yes, if we amen. know how to communicate, man, we got the battle won. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. But the biggest communication problem is that we do not listen to understand. My God. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. We re instead we we listen to reply. Uh -huh. We listen to throw jabs. Oh my God, y'all don't hear me tonight. Y'all better help me up in here. Let me say this again: the biggest communication problem is that we do not listen to under. Understand. Come on, somebody. Amen. That is our biggest problem: is that we don't know how to listen understand. to understand. This is why we come together and communicate. This is why. But rather, we listen to reply. Amen. We listen to tear down instead of lifting up. My God, I'm talking to somebody. We listen to say, you know what? I, I don't want to listen. I don't want to understand. I'm done with this brother. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. We listen to throw jabs. You know, we, we quit. Help me, Holy Ghost. You see, God, good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. Amen. Let me say it again. Good communication is the bridge. It's un puente between confusion and clarity. Can I get an amen? amen? This is not in the world, you know. Conversation, man, you, it's got to be sweet. You got to mean your conversation. You got to understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. You got to come to God first and pray about it before you go talk to that brother. My God, 
I'm being like Cuba tonight, amen. You better pray uh, before, before you come talk to me. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Give a praise in the house. You see, you got to be careful or you're going to be in my sermon, amen. If you're messing up, I'm going to put you in my sermon. Can I do that tonight, Matthew? Amen, amen. Hey, my God. You know, us as believers, we as Christians, we have forgotten that the ministry of listening has been committed to them by him, amen, who is himself the great listener amen. and whose work they should share. God is the great listener. He's the one that's telling us how to listen. Yes. Amen. amen. We should listen with the ears of God that we may speak the word of God. My God, y'all don't hear me tonight. Yeah. We got to understand it. I got to hear the way God wants me to hear. Amen. You see, because if I want to, oh, I'm talking to somebody. Now. If I want to hear what I want to hear, I ain't listening. I'm not hearing what God wants me to hear. Amen. Am I right, Brother Jesus? Yes, sir. Amen. So if we want to listen to what God is saying, and we want God say, listen the way I want you to hear. So that you can speak my word. Amen. How do we communicate? Prayer is our way of communication with God. Amen. Amen. Prayer is not simply asking God for things. He is not a genie. He ain't no hocus pocus. On, yeah. We got to get on our, on our knees and say, you know what? I can't communicate right now with this person. Amen. But you go to God. Amen. Because the Bible tells us pray without ceasing. Amen. Yes. Pray with, in all situations. Amen. Yes. Talk to me somebody. Our goal of prayer is not to attempt to manipulate our sovereign creator. We are to pray as Christ prayed according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. We got to say, okay, God, <laughs> I need to pray like you. Because yeah. my prayer ain't working. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some brothers were on fire. Some brothers fall. Yeah. Some brothers get in that word. And after a while, they see another brother not doing nothing. He just... He, he, he's a little lax, amen. And they say, okay, well, Brother Robert doing it. Why can't I do it? Uh oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. <laughs> Naheem, I see you back there. You got to stay in the Word of God and you got to get hungry for the Word of God, amen. amen. Because the Bible said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, amen. Amen. for they shall be filled. My God, I'm talking to somebody. Amen. You got to stay hungry for God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Social media. If we're not hungry for God, I tell you, the devil's going to slip in. Amen. He'll take your communication from you. Okay. Come on, somebody. You know what it is when you were out in the street? Yeah. You done got ganked and got, got beat by a shark. Amen. Yeah. He took everything you ain't even see coming. <laughs> but we, we, we got to be sober-minded. Amen. We, we got to say, God, I, I need you to discipline me tonight. Amen. I, I need you to, I, I need you, you, you have ran the race already, the Bible says. Jesus had already ran the race. But he tells us that sometimes we have to tell God, God, I, I know that you, your word says that you discipline your sons. Amen. Maybe I need a little bit more discipline. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews 12 tonight. Amen. Because I got to give you a little bit more tonight. Amen. The mighty name of Jesus. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. Give him glory in the house. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to keep on going. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that God disciplined his sons. Just like our fathers used to discipline us. We didn't like it. Yeah. Ay, papa. No more. Amen. And we endured it for a little bit, but then we were back the same way. <laughs> But God's word tells that he disciplines us for the good. Yeah. So that we may stand firm in his word. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. It says therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles my God. Mm -hmm. He says therefore since we were surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses. He's saying that we ain't around a bunch of spectators. There was people that were gone before us that paved the way for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It says, by such a great cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. 
He said, and let us what? Run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You see, there's a race for us. He said, there's already a race marked out for us. But to get in that race and to win the race, we got to persevere. Come on, somebody. We got to stand firm, and no matter if it hurts, but you know what? I'm going somewhere. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. That's why he says, oh my God, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> it said that, you know, Jesus, keep your eye on Jesus, just, just as a runner concentrates on the finish line, we should concentrate on Jesus, my God. Amen. That's, what he, that's what it's telling, you know, a, a race, when you're racing in the swimming pool, you got your eyes to the wall. You know, as soon as you hit the wall, you go back. Amen. But this word is telling us that we got to keep our eye on Jesus to win this race. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. That's why he said, let us what? Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. My God. Yes. You know, we can't run a race if we don't have the faith of God. Amen. We get tired. We'll get weary. We'll say, man, I'm done. You start racing real good about quarter mile. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That's the same way you are. In, come on, somebody. The same way we are with God, with our faith. We all, oh, I got faith today. I got faith to move them out tomorrow. No, man. They didn't give me my phone today. They took my, my, my cheeseburger. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Give them glory. You know, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? You can't move mountains, you're all depressed, all problems and everything. No, where's your faith? You got to keep running. Amen. Come on, somebody. He says he is our author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My God. Amen. Listen to this. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross. He went to the cross to endure so much so we wouldn't give up. Come on, somebody. Amen. He went to the cross so that we yes, wouldn't give up. Yes. So we would know how to race. Mm -hmm. We would know how to run. Amen. It said, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men mm -hmm. so that what? You will not grow weary and lose heart. My God is right in the word. He says, so what? You won't grow weary. He said, don't get tired. I hate you. Yo no puedo. That's what he's saying. Consider him who endures such opposition. God endures so much. Yes, he did. Yeah, no, quita poquito ya. We lose a little bit and now we want to fall out. Uh -huh. We ain't enduring nothing. Amen. Our addictions is what's killing us. Amen. Come on, somebody. The lust of this flesh is what's killing us. Amen. Our bodies can't take it no more. Come on, somebody. Amen. He says, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet what? Resisted to the point of shedding your own blood. My God. Mm -hmm. He said, on, you don't know what it feels like to have to shed your blood. You don't know how it feels to really have to let some sins go. What you got to go through. That's what it's saying. Amen. Come on, somebody. All right. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You know what that means? You know what? You, I'm bad. you got to resist. Like brother was telling me, they know I want to go. I said, no, you're not. You're going to stay. Am I right, brother? We got to understand, you got to resist it, man. You got to say, no, I ain't living this way today. Amen. I'm not going back to my old ways. Come on, somebody. I, I, I got to resist. I got to stand firm. Nothing's going to get in my way. Amen. My God. Even if, I, even if I got to shed some blood, my God. Amen. But we don't have to because God's already done it. Yes, Come on, somebody. Amen. Jesus has already done that Amen. for us. My God. And you have forgotten that the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. He says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, my God. And he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. I, Amen. Papa, Amen. listen to this. What did he just say? 
He because the Lord what? He said, and do not lose heart. No, 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 I don't love Jesus no more. Uh, when, when, when he rebukes you. Que tú no estás bien. He, he rebukes you with the word of God. He said, because the Lord what? Discipline those he loves. So that means we got a discipline coming. Sometimes we go through troubles. We get disciplined and we don't like it. Amen. But God says, I'm doing it because I love you. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's getting quiet in here. Amen. And he said what? And he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. You know, things go wrong in our lives. He goes, I'm being punished. <laughs> what did I do? No, what did you do? Amen. You might not be living right. That's why the punishment is coming, my God. Yeah. He said, the word, it's not my word. Endure hardship as a discipline. Oye lo que dice. Endure hardship as a discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? Amen. What son is not disciplined by his father? I've been, come on somebody. How many have been disciplined by their fathers? Well, God said, I'm going to discipline you too. Because you're going to like it at the end. Amen. Amen. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. My God. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? My God. ¿Cuánto más debemos de sumitar a Dios? Digo, ok, God. Porque, ¿qué? Él es el cuidado de los espíritus de nosotros. Uh -huh. Amen. It's in the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Our fathers, it says, disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. ¿Eh? Me traeme la varilla allá del, del, del árbol. Mojada. Uh -huh. Gave you a couple little bit. Amen. I see, I see Brother Jose out there smiling back there. Go give me a switch, amen. <laughs> and it, what, what it said, and look what the father's gonna give you to what was best. Huh? Maybe let me hit him about three or four times, amen. Mm -hmm. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplined us what for our good. My God, eh? God disciplines us for our good. Yes, He does. God wants the best, so he says, if I can't discipline you, how are you going, going to turn out the way I want you? Yeah. Amen. Vas a quedarte como un loco. You're going to stay with like a heathen, don't believe in me. Yeah. My God. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, but God disciplines us for the good that we may share in his holiness. Yes. There it is, brothers. He wants the best to live yes, holy, man. You know, yeah. you know. Don't don't take that word out of context. Oh, it's a great, muy holy, el señor, de muy santo, the great priest, el vato, You know. <laughs> no, holiness means we live a holy life, man. Yeah. We we live, we do things right now. Amen. No somos como el diablo, man. Talking crazy, mm -hmm. robando, peeping in somebody's window in the house. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sneaking in somebody's back door. Rolando, taking things that are not yours. He says, I want you to be, I want you to be the best that you are. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, later on come on, brother Robert. Later on, however, it produces what? Harvest. A harvest of righteousness amen, amen. and peace for those who have been trained amen. by it. My God. Amen. Discipline is a training. Mm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. When you got to go through some troubles, you got to go through some storms, it's a training for you. Yeah. It's a discipline, but it's for, the, it's for our best. It's for our best interests. Are y'all with me? Yes. Later on, look what it says. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. A harvest. That means it's going to be a lot, brothers and sisters. Amen. It's not just a little bit of righteous. It's going to be a harvest of righteousness. Everything that you put your hand on will going to be good. Yes. Everything that you do, every time you, you put something on, you're like, ay, mira mi hora. 
Yeah. I, I, I can't just wait. I can't wait to get to church. My God. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I can't wait to get to work. I, you know, I can't wait to pay my bills on time. I can't wait to give my tidings. Oh, my God. I'm talking to somebody now. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I love this. He says, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. My God. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. My God. Listen to this. A call for upright conduct that will help the saying, You know, it's a call for us to understand that this is going to help us. Amen. Amen. He says, the spiritual and moral welfare of others, especially the lame who waver in Christian faith. My God. Esta última tres is telling us, listen to this. Make level paths for your feet. Eh? You know, when you're walking in the level paths, you're not, you're not stumbling. Yeah. You're, not stumbling. Yeah. you're making your, your, your path wide because you become firm now. You become strong now. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? So that the lame... The lame may not be dis disabled, but rather healed. Magaha. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's those who waver in Christian faith. He's telling y'all, you're only the lame waver in Christian faith. Los que, los que ya no pueden andar, ya no así, así es la fe. That's what he's saying. But he's telling you, because I've disciplined you. Amen. You're not going to have that Amen. wavering faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're not going to waver. You're going to stand strong in God. Your faith is going to be for me. Amen. Come on, somebody. For Jesus, not me. Amen. Amen. But for God. Amen. Amen. That's why he says, straighten out your TV arms. It's como te quiere decir, estás débil todavía. You're still weak. Yeah. But he's telling you, come on, somebody. He says, therefore, straighten your feeble arms and your weak knees. Mm. Amen. I know some of us have some weak knees. Amen. <laughs> but he's talking to the heart. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He's talking to this heart today. Where is your heart? Is it like your weak knees? Is it like your weak arms? Amen. Is it like your weak faith? My God, I'm talking to somebody. Or do you stand for me? Stand he for says, me. I will discipline you for you are my sons. Because I love you. Give him praise in the house.